If you think you better than battle Hey. I couldn't figure out a way to start the vlog, so I'm just going to start the vlog by showing you in bed, and then I'll tell them I'm going to go play poker. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go play poker. In the morning, I wake another beautiful day. I finally figured the recipe. I bet I've given and taken life. It is what you make it. Nothing petty. So while I would love to say that I sat down at the Bellagio and extended my streak of first-hand all-ins from two sessions to three, that didn't happen. In fact, the opposite happened. I sat and folded and folded and folded for damn near three down straight. I had no playable hands and zero playable spots for almost an hour and a half. And then I got a hand. One hand. Poised to become a card rack, I was moved from that must move game into the main game. Uh, no, this is a must move, so just, they'll just move us around to fill the other games. Hey, hola, como esta? Saluditos. Let me show y'all how to beat go. Come on, get down for no ritmo. Fortunately for me, the card deadness I experienced at the must move game had dissipated by the time I reached the main game. In this, the first hand I saw in the main game, Race. I found a three bet after the small blind opens to $30 in an always dangerous blind versus blind situation. He folds and this bout ends in my favor. In the very next hand, the cutoff has posted because he had missed his blinds and this leads the hijack to open to $40. The cutoff calls the additional $30. I come along from the small blind with my small suited ace and the big blind gets in the mix as well. Four of us see a flop of seven, ace, nine with two spades. Flopping top pair is nice. My kicker leaves a lot to be desired though. Check. Big blind checks and the hijack continues for $60. The night before this session, I played a pretty long session with the player currently in the hijack. He's very capable of c-betting here with less than an ace. The cutoff folds and with top pair, I'm going nowhere. I call and the big blind folds. Heads up and the nine of spades falls on the turn, bringing in the front door flush and pairing the board. I check. He checks as well. When the five of clubs hits the river and I check again, I have no plans to fold if a reasonable bet comes my way. I can't lead and get called by worse, however, I can check and pick off bluffs. The hijack checks it back, and it turns out my little baby ace is good.
later, I find myself opening King Jack of Hearts to $30 from the earliest of positions, under the gun. This gets called by both the hijack and the small blind. Three ways, and we see a flop of 8, 7, 10 with one heart and two clubs. The small blind checks, and although I do have equity here, I check as well. The hijack jumps right in there with a $50 bet, and the small blind quickly exits. With two overcards and a straight draw, it's a bit too early for me to release my hand. I call. The turn king of spades is a welcome sight. I check again, and the hijack now tanks for a while before sliding a rather large bet into the middle. $160. This isn't a snap call. I have to think about this one. He's betting like he has two pair plus. Did he flop a straight? A set? Both are possible, I guess. I'm not in love with this spot, but I find the call. The river ace of diamonds is no help at all. I'm done with this hand. Check. Apparently, the hijack is done as well. He checks it back and puts two fingers on the felt. I reveal my hand, and he shows eight seven of diamonds for a flop bottom two pair. Oh, now I understand the two fingers thing. Well, isn't that special? <laughs> About ten minutes later, one of the better players in the field, we will just call him Benton, for lack of a better name, opens to $30 under the gun, and I make a bad call on the button with Queen Jack offsuit. Heads up, he bets again for $30 on King Jack 10 with two clubs. Well, this isn't a bad spot, despite the abysmal preflop call. I have middle pair and a straight draw. I call. I brace for him to lead again on the turn when the three of diamonds appears. But he doesn't. He checks. I check it back, hoping for the straight draw to come in on the river. As it is, my hand is barely medium strength against his much stronger under-the-gun opening range. The river brings in the nine of spades, completing my straight, and he checks again. Now it's time for me to extract some value. I slide $80 into the middle. There's a pause, and then he raises to $740. Excuse me? What? Yeah, you see that? You'd have fucked up, you know that, don't you? I see what I'm saying. I, no, I, I thought... No, so, you know what I'm saying? Then you're not fucked up. No, you know that, don't you? <laughs> yes, I have a straight, but not the nuts. In fact, a good portion of my ace-queens would have raised preflop. And this is a piece of information that, um, what are we calling him? Benton would know. I realized that he could just be pushing me off a chop, but... There isn't much I can do about it. Fold. The battle isn't over yet, though. In the very next hand, it's his big blind. I open 10 six of spades from the cutoff, and both he and the small blind fold. So, he won one, I won one. So now, we're even. In the following hand, I make a pretty standard open to $30 under the gun with King Queen of Hearts, and to my surprise, I get min raised to $60 from the player next to act. What's that? This player hasn't been out of line or doing crazy things that I've seen, so this seems a bit strange. I call the min raise. Jack, four, deuce with two spades. I check. Let's see what he does. Interestingly, he checks it back. The turn 10 of diamonds puts two backdoor draws on board, both straight and flush. I'm hoping that maybe he has ace king or pocket nines, so I bet $50. He thinks about this for a second and calls. The river six of hearts, a brick. Both flushes missed and my draw missed. If I'm going to win this hand, I have to bet. I lead for $180, which is probably a bit bigger than necessary. The villain pauses, checks his cards, pauses again, and grabs a random stack of black chips amounting to $600 and places them into the pot. 
Um, I'm not sure what this is. Maybe pocket tins, but I'm pretty sure I won't find out. Fold. In the hand following that one, our previous villain now under the gun opens to $30. When action gets around to the cutoff, he deems it necessary to raise to $110. Unlike the original opening player on my left, the cutoff has been known to get out of line from time to time. I look down at ace five of clubs from the big blind and know that this is a hand that likes to get spicy. So let's turn up the heat a bit. I find the four bet, $260. The original opener folds and now the cutoff tanks. There aren't a lot of hands that merit a cold four bet coming out of the big blind. Mainly aces, ace king, ace queen, kings, queens obviously. A sprinkle of king-queen suited and some jacks. And this one, ace-five suited. He thinks about this for a while and finds the call. Heads up and out of position, this has a potential to get dicey. If we catch the right board here, he might just catch a big portion of my stack. Eight of clubs, seven of diamonds, four spades. Well, that's got potential. We continue for $180 and he tanks again, but not as long as he did pre-flop and calls. The turn king of spades is interesting. I check and in hindsight, this card is so good for my range that I probably shouldn't have. Betting through this card would have been a better option. He checks the turn back. Not betting this card has kind of left me in no man's land. Aces, ace-king, king-queen would have most likely bet the turn. Still heads up, we head to the river. The dealer burns and turns the six of hearts. Damn, girl, what you saying? What you saying, huh? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Jeez. Well, this hand just got a bit easier to play. We don't have the nuts, as 10-9 suited is still a possible cutoff holding, however, we don't just have ace high anymore either. If we get coolered here, oh well, we've been coolered before. We size way up here and drop $620 in the middle as if I missed the flush holding a hand like ace-queen suited. And now we wait as he tanks a final time. 10 seconds. Twenty seconds. Thirty seconds. Thirty six seconds later, the cutoff folds. I see him, Bradley. Good luck over there. Nice. Get out of here. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait any longer. I'm in. Yes. Don't you worry. I'm doing it. Sounds like prom night. <laughs> I think you're the only one that heard it. intriguing hand of the session was this next one. 
The under the gun player, easily the most actiony player in the entire Bellagio 510 player pool, limps. The low jack raises to $40 and holding pocket queens, I decide to just flat. We are hundreds of big blinds deep and sometimes, not often, but sometimes, it's a good idea to flat with really strong hands, show a capped range, and then just have them blast off into you. The small blind slides $40 in for the call and our actiony player transforms his $10 limp into a $40 call as well. There are four of us. 986 Rainbow. Not a perfect flop for the plan I'm hatching, but with no overcards to my queens on board, it'll do just fine. The small blind checks and our original limping action player now bets $100 into this $170 pot. The low jack folds. We continue with our plan and just call his $100 bet. Action now returns to the small blind and she check raises. This is unexpected. She makes it $230 to go. The player in the small blind having sets isn't out of the question. However, there are ample draws on this board. The under the gun player calls and I call the $230 too. The turn three of hearts is as blank as blank gets. The small blind now with the betting lead decides to check, as does the under the gun player. This isn't the typical behavior of someone that flopped a set, check raised, and got two callers. This is the behavior of someone that has a big draw. Maybe a pair and a draw, but not a super strong hand, like a set. It's time to start extracting value now. I bet $440 thinking that I'll maybe get one out of these two players to call. Surprisingly, they both call. Uh-oh. Things are getting a bit thin now. The River Deuce of Diamonds is as clean of a card as I can hope for. The small blind checks, the under the gun player checks, and the draws have missed, and I can't really picture many hands I can get more value from. I check behind. The under the gun player instamucks and the player in the small blind shows a nine. I would later find out she had nine seven. I table pocket queens and drag this abnormally bloated pot my way. Nothing really happens for the next hour or so. And at this point, I leave the table to go do the mid session update. So here we are, Bellagio, Saturday night. The room is buzzing, it's packed in here. Um, my game is actually really good and I'm not feeling it tonight. Mentally, I'm just like a little cloudy. Maybe I'm just tired, maybe I'm getting sick. I don't know, I'm playing hands in really weird ways. I'm just kind of going through the motions. So I think I don't think I've ever done this on the vlog. I think I'm just gonna call it a night. I think I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna go home and get some rest and we'll just be back here tomorrow. So, well, normally this is the mid-session update. This is just gonna be a wrap for tonight. I'm trying to be smart. I'm trying to make wise decisions. And I think that's the wisest decision to get out of here. Come back strong. I'm up though. My game is good. All right, let's get out of here. Another opportunity that, that'll be better suited for you. You don't have to have everyone.
gonna come, we gotta get it. Yeah. And he said, don't make me look bad in the vlog. Now I gotta make you look bad. You shouldn't have told me about Dylan. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, he's got like a set of sixes. I'm in trouble. <laughs> and it's a ticket talking monster for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma and a comma. Sorry to disappoint you, but I didn't mess up that many times this time. <laughs> Not that many. Near perfect. Filling up. Join now. And I'm leaving. One of the things I realized uh, years ago when playing this game is when you're not feeling it, you're just not feeling it. And tonight, yeah. Pick one. Go ahead. What is it? Oh, it was next. All right. I'm going to go play poker. 